on Sci-Fi Fantasy Network, I'm talking to Ian Beatty. You may recognise him as Sir Meryn Trent from Game of Thrones. Uh, how did you feel about the character when you first uh, got the scripts? I thoroughly enjoyed him, actually, uh, if truth be told. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to play a complete scumbag. It really is. I mean, you get a lot of pleasure out of hopefully playing something so completely different to, to, to your own character. So I really enjoyed him, certainly for the first four seasons I had an absolute ball with him. Are you genuinely uh, attracted to doing villain roles? Uh, not really. I do happen to have quite a talent for it, uh, <laughs> but I've, you know, it's whatever job you get, so uh, you're delighted to get any job and um, you do the best that you can. Sir Merrin was quite easy to get. He was quite, I had very, very good director and producers working on Game of Thrones. Nothing was left to chance. Uh, we were quite clear on uh, what sort of character he was, and I worked with some of the greatest directors I've ever worked with. It was fantastic. Uh, were you much of, did you read the books when you got the part? Or? No, I did not, and I haven't yet. Funny enough, I had the pleasure and privilege of meeting George Martin out in San Francisco earlier on this year, and I did tell him that I had all his books, probably two or three copies of all his books, <laughs> but that I wasn't going to read them until he was about to publish book seven. Oh. I'm not doing a Harry Potter again. I am not waiting two years for <laughs> the last book to come out. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you first got into acting? What first attracted you to the book? Uh, many, many years ago, uh, I used to travel around with uh, a circus belonging to a friend of my father's, and I used to do that every summer for three or four years. I suppose that's where I got bitten by the bug. I was pretty young at the time. But as long as, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be an actor, uh, always. And a film and television actor, probably more than a theatre one. I mean, I, it's no secret that I wouldn't be theatre's biggest fan. Uh, I much prefer being on set. Uh, it's where I feel most at home. But not, you've not just been in uh, TV, you've been in some blockbusters like Alexander. You're yeah, Alexander. In, uh, I, worked, I worked with Oliver Stone for yeah. my sins. I don't know what I did in a previous life. Uh, it must have been something really bad. <laughs> to have to spend six months with Mr. Stone. Alexander, for me, was when I saw the finished version, I was uh, disappointed with the film. There was a lot of stuff that we shot that didn't uh, make it, uh, and I was I was um, sad about that. Because Antigonus, is, he's quite an interesting character from history. I know one of my best friends is a historian, specifically of Alexander's period. Again, was that a role that you researched at the time? I, I researched it very well. There was only one book I could find by an American academic on Antigonus, yeah. and I sent away for it as soon as I knew I'd got the role, and it was quite a hefty tome, so I was able to find out a lot about him. And funny enough, the one thing that always struck me about that character when I, when I first uh, got the role was the simple line that he died at the age of 81 on the battlefield with a sword in his hand. That kind of said something to me about who I was playing. I really enjoyed playing that side of him. There were also, I hear, a lot of academics involved in it, like Robin Lane Fox, etc. Were, were the academics getting involved with the actors? And yeah, Rob and I, I struck up a very good friendship with Rob, and he was fantastic, and he was such an incredible source for uh, the material, uh, because he was probably the most knowledgeable man in the world about that uh, particular time. And he's an absolute gentleman as well, so it was real fun and a real buzz getting to meet Robin Lane Fox. I still have a signed copy of his book oh, at home. Oh, yes. Well, one of my best friends, Gemma, will be very jealous of you for that. Good. Uh, uh, you're I'm in the Vikings. Sorry, Gemma. <laughs> you're, you're in the Vikings at the moment. Uh, briefly. Briefly, yeah. <laughs> very briefly. It, it, it was funny because a part of me was very, very sorry that I didn't uh, hold out for a, a role that would have allowed me more time on set, simply because it was such a fantastic set to be part of. It was such a pleasure working on Vikings. I was only on it for a week, and I think it was quite deliberate that people would recognise me from Game of Thrones and they would add to the shock value of me virtually immediately getting killed. <laughs> but I had a wonderful time on set. It was a really good set to be part of, and sorry I wasn't there for longer. So what's next for you at the moment? What are you working on now? Uh, we finished a series for the History Channel called Barbarians Rising. I did it in August. It'll be coming on the History Channel next year. Ian McElhenney and Fintan McKeown are both in it as well. Uh, in, we're all in different episodes, so we're excited about that. And I've just finished a film in Belfast called The Journey, uh, starring Timothy Spall as Ian Paisley, Colin Meaney as Martin McGuinness, John Hurt's in it, Toby Stevens is in it, and I get to play Jerry Adams. Thanks to Game of Thrones, I've, I've been, you know, the profile has been much raised, and uh, I'm getting seen for stuff now that I'm absolutely delighted about, and I don't think I would have been seen for before Game of Thrones. So I have a lot to be grateful for. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. It's been thank a pleasure. You. Cheers. Real pleasure.